Today, I want to talk about the ICE detention center attack by a member of Antifa. So this is about a week old now. I'm getting to it just now, but I still think it's important to talk about. What happened was you have this individual, William Von Sprosen, who went to an ICE detention center in Washington, and he went there with an AR-15 and with things he could catch things on fire, and he essentially tried to light buildings and cars on fire. He actually did succeed with a car, as you saw in the thumbnail. And in response to that, as you would expect, the ICE officers saw him as an imminent threat because he could have caught buildings on fires and could have killed ICE agents as well as immigrants. So it's not doing a good job there. And so they ended up shooting and killing him. Now, I want to just look at what BuzzFeed News says here and that there's a quote of him saying that he was doing it because he was fighting against the forces of evil. Now, I do believe that there is evil in this world, but... I don't think that ICE agents who are simply doing their job are that evil. He obviously did, and we're gonna talk about the rhetoric that may have, I guess, helped him form that view in just a little bit. First, what I wanna do is look at his, I guess, standing in Antifa. So he's not just some random guy who just barely joined. As a matter of fact, in 2018, he was arrested for lunging and grabbing at a police officer during an Antifa protest. He is not brand new to Antifa and he's, he's been a part of it. And if you're not familiar with Antifa, I don't want to get into it too much, but they claim to be anti-fascist. They focus on hate and they use violence to achieve whatever goals they want. So before I look more into the detail about the rhetoric that has been used, I want to just quote from the National Review something that I agree with entirely. So it says here, no one should be blaming any politician or political group for this assault, except possibly Antifa of which he was a member so what he says, and I agree with this, is that no one should be blaming any politician or political group for this assault. In spite of what I'm going to talk about in a little bit, I don't think anyone was responsible for this besides the individual and quite possibly Antifa because they often glorify this sort of violence. And it shows here they did kind of accept it because after he was shot, they posted a eulogy on Facebook. So Antifa aside, he is the only one responsible for this, regardless of what he decided to listen to and why he thought they were evil. So that being said, let's look at what his manifesto was and what his views were. So here's the start of his manifesto. And you can see that this is basically his eulogy that they posted. And there are just a few points here I want to look at. First and foremost, in the very second paragraph, he says, evil says concentration camps for folks deemed lesser are necessary. And then the handmaid of evil says the concentration camp should be more humane. So right there we have in the second paragraph, he already mentions concentration camps twice. Now, if you don't remember, this has been, I guess, in the news a lot recently. That's because AOC has chosen to use the word concentration camp instead of ICE detention center. And she's been doing this for the past several weeks. I made a video about it talking about how I don't agree with it. And this is one of the reasons. And that is because concentration camp in America is going to generate Nazi imagery. When you think of a concentration camp, even though it technically can apply to many things, the things that are fresh in our mind are what happened during World War II. So this individual thought, or in his mind, they were concentration camps, which means that these ICE agents were in fact evil, as we just saw. And if you really believe that, then he was justified in doing this and going and trying to stop them. If you truly did believe that we are running Nazi Germany-like concentration camps on the border, then you have some form of obligation to go and stop it. That is obviously not what is happening, but it seems that this individual may have thought that is the case. I'm not arguing that the conditions on the border are great because they're not, and I've made a video about this, but they are not even close to what we're gonna think of when you think of concentration camps in Nazi Germany. So continuing on, he actually mentions concentration camp two more times. So a total of four times in this relatively short manifesto. And I think that is important because like I said, that has been in the news a lot because of AOC. So I want to compare the relative lack of media attention here to what happened after the Pittsburgh shooting of last year. The media reaction to that in my mind was completely ridiculous and it's, it's the exact opposite of what has happened this time. So this time, the media did cover it, but they didn't place blame. It was basically one story. There has been very, very little talk about this. But the Pittsburgh shooting, there was a plethora of things. The media was consistently blaming Trump for what happened. So I want to just read a few of the quotes from these so-called journalists, if you want to call them that, and see how they reference and they essentially blame Trump for what happened then. But in no way is it AOC's fault this time because they like her and they don't like Trump. So let's start with Alyssa Camarota from CNN. She says, 
you can draw a direct line from all of the vitriol and hate rhetoric about the caravan that's some 2,000 miles away from our border and the gunmen in Pittsburgh. So if you remember, the Pittsburgh shooting happened around the time of the midterms, and at that point, Trump was focusing a lot on immigration and the caravan that was coming across the border. So he was talking a lot about the caravan. Now, you don't have to agree with it or even like it, but what she is saying here is that Trump is responsible for the attack on the synagogue. There's a direct line between him talking about caravans to the Pittsburgh shooting, essentially placing blame on him. Continuing on, let's look at how MSNBC's Joe Scarborough reacted. Now, the same day that this Pittsburgh shooting happened, Trump held a rally in Illinois. So in his mind, in Joe Scarborough's mind, this is what that rally actually represented. Quote, that was done intentionally to send a message to white nationalists that this doesn't bug me that much. So according to Scarborough, because the Pittsburgh shooting happened and Trump still held his scheduled rally on that day, in his mind, that means that Trump was dog whistling and telling the white nationalists that the shooting wasn't really a big deal because he still held his rally. That is completely ridiculous. Now let's look at The Atlantic, where Adam Serwer, I probably pronounced that completely wrong, said that it was an apparent spark for the shooting and that it was, quote, inflamed by a U.S. president seeking to help his party win a midterm election. So once again, because Trump was talking about the caravan, that sparked the Pittsburgh shooting and essentially was why it happened. Now, the New York Times, Charles Blow, he said, homicidal maniacs are responsible for their own actions. And I completely agree with that first part. But then when still talking about the Pittsburgh shooting, he said, there is no way to separate Trump from the fulminating against the caravans. So essentially the same thing we've already heard a million times. He said that no one's responsible, but at the same time, Trump is kind of responsible. And lastly, from Washington Post, we have Ruth Marcus who said, if there is not cause and effect between Trump's language and the shooter's alleged actions, there is moral capabil culpability for creating this overheated climate of fear. So that last one really gets me, where she basically said, if Trump is not responsible for the shooting directly, he is still indirectly responsible because he says lots of bad things. Now, I want to be entirely clear here. I don't approve of everything that Trump says and does. His tweets are sometimes very incendiary to say the least, and I don't agree with everything that he says. But unless he directly called someone to action, he is not responsible for the actions that they then take. So AOC, who has called these detention camps, concentration camps time and time and time again, is also not responsible for the ice shooting. I completely think that that is the case and she is not responsible for it. But I think it's interesting that the media goes out of their way to try and find any possible link that they can to link Trump to a tragedy while when there is a very clear link to AOC in a tragedy, it is completely ignored. Let me re-emphasize, just in case you didn't quite get it, I don't think AOC is responsible, but you cannot say on the one hand that Trump was responsible here and then not continue that train of thought and say that AOC is responsible. Basically, the media likes to blame Trump because they don't like him and they don't like his policies, but then they will defend AOC and the squad around her because they do like her and her policies. As a matter of fact, when asked about this, AOC, said, quote, any act of violence is, of course, terrible, unquote, but to my knowledge, as of yet, she has not directly blamed Antifa and condemned them for this attack. So just put that in perspective for one second. But if there was some form of disaster from a white supremacist and Trump did not immediately condemn it, the media would attack him relentlessly. And to my understanding, that has happened on occasion. I'm not saying that he's defending it again, but when something like that happens, if the media tries to blame you, you kind of have to say, this isn't my fault and I condemn it completely. But here it has been a week. And again, to my knowledge, according to what I've seen, she has not directly condemned Antifa for this attack. And yet the media doesn't seem to care. They don't talk about it. As a matter of fact, we have Representative Hakeem Jeffries, who when asked about it, he didn't blame AOC or any of the other squad like Ilhan Omar or Rashida Tlaib. Instead, he said, the person that needs to tone down the xenophobic and racist rhetoric is Donald J. Trump. So not only was this not AOC's fault, even though the manifesto clearly uses much of the terminology she has been using recently, not only is it not her fault, but it's Donald Trump's fault because he is a racist and he says racist things. So for the last time before I finish, let me be completely clear. I do not think AOC is responsible. 
for this, just like I don't think Trump is responsible for the other tragedies that has occurred. But if you blame Trump in that situation, and then you do not even try to blame anyone else in this situation, you just say it was one crazy individual, you are clearly showing your media bias. You're showing that you approve of one policy, so you will defend that individual, but you don't approve of the other policy, so you won't defend them, and you will do whatever you can to attack them. So maybe it's just me, but every time this happens, I somehow find myself even more surprised at the media. I probably shouldn't be because this continually happens and they always let me down, but I always think that maybe they're gonna rise up and do something right. And then things like this happen and it shows that, well, they basically don't. So that's all I had for you today. I hope that it was informative. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Do you think that the media botched this one and that they were basically silent just because they approve of the policies of the individuals who might be linked to it? What are your thoughts? Thank you for watching. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe, give me a like, share, just basically let YouTube know that you appreciate the content that I am doing. And I will see you next time.